Right, so I have here Nugent Audio SEQS already opened and here is one curve. Uh, I'm going, you can see the spectrum analyzer here. And now I don't want to affect this zone, so I'm going to click on zone and draw my zone close to this. And now I can do whatever I like to this curve without affecting the outside. If I click the exclude button, it's just inverted, so I can now work on the outside and this won't be affected by my efforts. Okay, so here is a depth uh, control, so I can go very deep or very shallow. So let's bring it to something like that. And here's the sharpness, so if I really want to be very accurate, I can drag that all the way to 1. If I don't want to be that accurate and I want to have a very smooth curve, I can draw it to 0 whatever your need is. So um, I can also of course uh, deactivate analysis and then there's nothing happening anymore. Um, what can I also do is click on the advanced button and then I get here an, a number of options that weren't available before. But for example the banding. So if I want to have very very narrow control I can use chromatic and as you can see this is what chromatic does. So there are a lot of these dots and it allows me really to very accurately draw the curve. Right. I can also have different graphs. I can assign a graph to, for example, in this case, one is left and right. But if I want to, I can have a different curve for the right side or for mid and side. So I'm going to to do right because I'm working with a stereo signal. Now I'm going to create a different curve on uh, graph 2, which you could call a channel in SEQS. And that's the other curve. Now I have two curves, both for a different channel. I'm going to turn off my second channel again, and now I am going to create another curve but in the same channel and this is going to be my B curve. B is another memory slot. So now I can switch between A and B and that is where the advanced morphing comes into place. If I have two curves I can let the equalizer switch between them like so. And if I do that in a loop form, I can have it looping. And the sound will change according to the curve, of course. And so I can have my time, time base sorry, in seconds, or I can have it in beats per minute, and I can drag that down and loop it again. And that is what it looks like when the beats per minute is 61 in this case. I can draw that up and then you get something like this or make it very slow and then you get something like that. That's it. And um, that's SEQS in a nutshell for you.